Hey folks, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, the holes and how they were slightly, ever so slightly off. And here you can see in the center, this is the most egregious hole that I could find. And that is uh, a plate, or I mean the skin with a thickener behind it and then a rib behind that. Uh, and all lined up, you can see it's slightly off. So that's the worst one I could find. The rest of them all look great. Uh, and here's a a shot of sort of the rest of them slightly out of focus. You can see the vast majority of them are 100% in line. And that is, again, that's uh, the, that T of, of holes is the the uh, skin with a thickener underneath it. And then right down the middle, uh, there's even a rib down the middle of that. And they're all pretty much lined up 100%. So their, their, their system that they have, the computerized system for creating the holes, is just about 100% perfect all the time, except for whatever reason, just a couple. Eh, no big deal. And this is where we were in the last video. And so from here on, I'm going to be putting on the other skin and continuing to drill all the holes along that J-stiffener. You can sort of see in this picture that the, the line of holes in the center uh, from closest near to far, farthest as you go down the J-stiffener have been drilled. And so now I need to drill the rest of them. And that's what I'm going to do here. By the way, um, my uh, the batteries died in my little... Uh, digital audio recorder so even though I did start it it actually recorded for like a millisecond and then quit and I didn't notice until the end of the day so whoops okay well uh, you can see I've got this whole area yet to do uh, I, I need to finish drilling all these out uh, I'm hoping tonight this is gonna be another short night I'm hoping tonight I get this panel hung get all of these holes drilled through the J channel uh, and then once I get that done and that done, then I go back and redrill all the common holes. Uh, first thing I'm going to have to do, though, is pull off of the bluing off that big piece of metal back there, which is going to take a while because it is big. It's also very nasty. There's a storm blowing in. So I mean, part of me kind of wants to not do this today because of that. Uh, you know, nothing worse than being stuck at the hangar because there's a nasty storm blowing in, but oh well, I'm here. So step one is to get all this bluing off. And I've mentioned this before, taking the bluing off that skin, it takes a long time. Uh, these big pieces of aluminum, these really big skins, just take a while to work with. You just have to kind of go slow. Uh, be careful not to rip the bluing because, honestly, it's easier to pull off uh, if you just pull a little bit at a time. Uh, I've got this sped up considerably, as you can see, so... You know, I'll save you some of the pain of watching it, but there are two sides. One thing I would recommend is having something uh, smooth or soft underneath it so that you don't scratch it up as you're working with it. Uh, I had that one board underneath there, which left a slight mark on one spot. Uh, I guess I put my hand down on it or something. Uh, no big deal. Nothing nothing major, but it is a possibility that you can leave funky marks. Uh, the other thing is, is on this side, you'll see uh, on the, on the one side, it's, you know, perfectly clean blue on the other side. It's got the labeling on the blue, that labeling. Sometimes when you pull the bluing off, it has actually bleached through the bluing into the aluminum itself. Don't let that hurt your heart because <laughs> when you do go and, um, paint the skin or paint the, uh, uh, plane, you're going to do much worse to the plane than that the, that marking. You're going to use like a, a uh, Brillo pad almost to just scuff up the whole thing. So the only thing I would recommend is if you're planning to paint, don't worry about it. If you're not planning to paint, meaning you're going to just buff, uh, you might want to be, you know, pay certain attention as to which side has the writing on it and which side doesn't if it has bleached through and actually marked uh, the metal itself. And as you see, uh, after I did that, I started putting it onto the wing itself and began the process of drilling all the holes along the center line, getting it all clecoed up and making sure everything lined up and looked correct. A lot of going back and forth to the other side to make sure the various ribs lined up to the holes. And then it was just about going back and forth and drill, 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 drill all of the holes. Um, there's something like a thousand holes uh, on this skin uh, on this side of the skin that you have to drill, dimple, 
and then uh, ultimately rivet, which I'm doing now. And uh, you can't rush this process. So it's just, it's going to take days. And in fact, it did. So you just kind of have to accept it and go with it. It's not too bad. Uh, I really, I can really appreciate though, why you're doing the left wing and then the right wing later, as opposed to doing both wings at the same time. I think doing... Uh, doing this left wing and then immediately doing this on the right wing would probably drive you insane. So I, I can very much appreciate that they have you do these at different times. So thank you, Vans, for checking our sanity without me even knowing it. Appreciate it. So once I got all that done, I went in and started to ponder some of the uh, number eight size holes, which have the nut plates and specifically how I'm going to dimple those, uh, those that need dimpling and do the uh, countersinking for those that need that. Uh, the first thing I have to do is dimple the very top one. The rest of them will be flush countersunk. And I will talk to how I'm going to dimple that one here. So sometimes you run into a situation where you have to do some odd size dimpling in weird places in awkward situations, right? And the DRDT2 or the Wacka Mole Dimpler or any of those others really don't work. Enter this beauty. So I've got to dimple this number eight hole right here and I need to uh, do just this one on this piece while it's assembled. Wow. So this is uh, one of those another places where the, the squeezer wins. And there you go. You have a beautiful, beautiful hole that is dimpled. Now, of course, if had this been like over here in the middle, this would have been impossible. And I don't know what the hell I would have done, but it works great here. And here's where I was at the end of the day, where I had both the skins on, had that one dimple done, and had all drilled a whole bunch of holes. And uh, I went home. <laughs> I also proceeded to go out of town and was gone for... 14 almost 14 days before I got back out here just because I was out of town and then I came back and I was sick and I just didn't feel good and and it was just not a not a good time so but I eventually did get back to it and I'm just gonna continue on from there so this that big gap of time you guys won't even notice it hey folks quick update so I am coming back after being a, a little sick for a while slight prolonged sickness I've not done a lot of work but trying to get back into it and I'm also going to cut these videos so hopefully there's no downtime from your perspective. Um, I'm working still on this wing area and specifically these are the doublers. This is the area where you're going to step to get into the plane which will be over here. And I've been working on specifically uh, some of the screws and nut that are, that'll have nut plates on the inside as well as countersinking some of the holes uh, that will have rivets in it. Important note when working on this, so this is the aft right here of the wing, this line of rivets are not done anything with at all. And you can see that this one is actually dimpled and then the rest of these are machine countersunk. And they are specifically machine countersunk so that a number eight flush screw dimple will sit inside of it. And that means when you do countersink it, you're gonna end up countersinking it rather deeply, right? So the, the countersink depth is gonna go actually through multiple pieces of metal, and that's okay. So anyways, I just thought I'd give you guys an update. That's what I'm working on right now. Um, I have a lot to do, obviously, um, but I have not filmed every millisecond of it uh, just because I didn't really see the point. So anyways, there we go. I have to work on my uh, camera positioning. On that last one, I was looking at the uh, the other camera, my full frame camera, and my face was almost entirely out of frame. I'm still new at this. <laughs> also, I realized that this uh, this camera that you're looking at here is really too far away. I have learned my mistake. I was trying to keep it out of reflections, but uh, it's really worthless here. Sorry about that. So what I'm working on right now is countersinking, uh, machine countersinking all of the holes that correspond with the wing walk doublers. So this is the part of the wing that you're actually gonna be stepping up on to get into the plane. And all of these holes, because it's, this metal is so thick, because there's actually a couple levels, there's technically three, there's 
the, uh, the skin itself, the doubler plate, which is underneath, and then the rib flange as well. So you need to countersink those. So you can see I've countersunk some of them right here and I'm going through and I'm going to do it all the rest of them. I've been testing the countersink with a rivet that I put in occasionally uh, just to test to see how it sits. And uh, it's really just kind of wash, rinse, repeat. A lot of the same stuff over and over again. Uh, important things. Uh, you don't touch this row of holes, this row of holes either when you're doing the countersinking because again, the doubler is not here. This will be, these will be dimpled. Uh, same with this row. This is the J stiffeners actually under here. We're not countersinking that either. That will also be dimpled. And the very bottom row for the same reason. Again, it'll be dimpled. So the majority of the holes on the skin are dimpled except for these, again, because of the thickness. And here we get really comfortable with our countersink tool and go through and countersink those. Uh, it's less than 100. I think it was like 75 or 76 total holes that had to be countersunk. But it was also, you know, countersink one, uh, then move the Clico up. Countersink one, move the Clico up. That sort of thing. Uh, otherwise, the Clicos would get in the way. So that's what went on here. And uh, not, not terribly difficult. Uh, again, the, you know, one of those camera views is uh, really far away, and I will uh, do better about that next time. Make sure the cameras are positioned a little more friendly. Also, the hanger was closed because it was still kind of thundery and nasty outside, so I haven't had the, the hanger open. But thankfully, I haven't had to have the heater on. It's actually been fairly nice out for the most part. But anyways, that's what I did. Lots and lots of work, and I'll talk about the uh, post now. Okay, all the work is done. Um, I've gone through and I did all the uh, countersinking of those doubler plates, the, the area where you walk. Uh, now it's a matter of disassembling everything and then beginning the process of dimpling the skin. Uh, I'm going to disassemble, going to lay it out, and then I'm going to build, uh, put my dimpler up here and make sure that I have enough area to work in. Uh, and then dimple all the holes. Fun, fun. Dimpling sucks. So uh, disassembly first, and then I'll show more about dimpling. Here we go. Actually, dimpling will come later. One thing I forgot to do is I had to take all the Clicos out and then do the uh, deburring. Uh, anyways, you can see that I'm super excited to deburr this thing. Uh, and I will save you guys the hassle of, you know, watching me do all of this because it sucks. Dimpling next time, guys. Thanks for watching.